Hey everyone, it's Pastor Britt Strohecker and welcome to this episode of Closer to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we look forward to again hearing from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Help us to understand the things that you want us to get from this particular portion of this letter. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're in Romans chapter 8, and this section is entitled The Future Glory, and we're beginning at verse 18 of chapter 8 of the book of Romans. Yet, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will give us later. So, this statement and this verse should be a go-to verse when you throw up your hands and say, you know, I've had enough of life, I've had enough of problems, I've had enough of this, I've had enough of that, or I've met my limit or whatever, okay? What we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He, meaning God, will give us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who His children really are. Against its will, everything on earth was subjected to God's curse. All creation anticipates the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And even we Christians, although we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. Did you hear that? A foretaste of future glory. So that Holy Spirit within us is giving us a glimpse of how things will be when we're united with God and we're all part of the children of God and God's future glory comes amongst us. It's like when you have that moment where you have a certain peace that just flows over your body and we have that warm sensation just go through us and we get those goose pimples uh, when we feel the presence of God uh, surrounding us or uh, enveloping us and giving us peace in situations. That's kind of a foretaste of God's glory and the future glory that we will all experience. And and what Paul's saying here in this section is, is that, you know, right now all creation kind of groans under the weight of the struggles and the tribulations and the trials we face in this physical realm that we live within uh, that is part of God's creation. But once we get into that spiritual realm, nothing from the physical realm will be able to touch us or uh, inflict anything on us anymore. You know, when people say about a person that's passed away, well, they're in a better place. Well, they are. They're in a place where there's no decay, there's no death, there's no sorrow, there's no suffering. All that stuff goes away. But until then, you know, we're, we're going to have to go through those things. But like you said at the beginning of this, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will give us later. And God wants to encourage us by giving us glimpses of that glory uh, with the Holy Spirit living within us. So that's what Paul is trying to tell us, okay? Um, and even as, and let's get back to that verse in verse 23. And even as we Christians, uh, although we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, also grown to be released from the pain and suffering, we too wait anxiously for that day when God will give us our full rights as his children, including the new bodies he has promised us. Now that we are saved, we eagerly look forward to this freedom uh, for if you, uh, freedom, yeah, for this freedom, okay? For if you, sorry, had a bifocal moment there for you, okay? So, let me try to get this uh, straightened out here, okay? We, too, anxiously wait for the day when God will give us our full rights as his children, including the new bodies he has promised. Now that we are saved, we eagerly look forward to this freedom. For if you already have something, you don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't have yet, we must wait patiently and confidently. You know how kids get excited about their birthday coming up and they think about, man, I'm going to get presents. We're going to have a party. We're going to have a good time. All my friends will be there. We're going to have cake and ice cream and all the rest. You know, they get excited about that and they, they, they sometimes can't wait for it to happen. They're impatient. Well, that's how it is to be a Christian uh, we know that there's a future glory coming, but we have to wait patiently and expectantly for it because we know that God has made these promises to us, but we have to claim the promises. We have to stand upon the promises. We have to walk in those promises. We have to walk 
and, and following his lead and his guide and his light. We need to allow him to be a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to lead us and direct us in giving us direction within our lives. So don't get lost in these sections of these letters that Paul has written because, yeah, sometimes I'm having difficulty reading some of this today, uh, just reading it out loud. So just reading it out loud can be difficult, but sometimes we just kind of gloss over or glaze over when we hear all this stuff that Paul's trying to say to us. But if we take a moment to consider what he's saying, we understand what he's trying to explain to us because this stuff he's talking about is hard to put into words so we need to take the time to consider it carefully okay verse 26 and the holy spirit helps us in our distress for we don't even know what we should pray for nor how we should pray but the holy spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words so if you get into that point where you're trying to pray to God and you're trying to follow God and you're trying to understand God. All these things can be overwhelming at times and sometimes they won't make sense to us and sometimes it'll frustrate us or sometimes we want to throw up our hands and say, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to relate to you, God. I don't know what to say to you, God. I don't know how to walk in the footsteps that you are placing me, placing on the path before me. I don't know how to do all this stuff. Well, when we get to that point, that's where we need the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Let go of things and say, Lord, just let your Holy Spirit guide and direct me and give me what to say and help me understand and help me to walk. You know, those are the things we need to pray for when we get into those situations. Because if we allow ourselves to become frustrated by it and think about it too much or overthink it, then sometimes we'll just get to the point where we just don't want to deal with it and we set it aside or we put it on the back burner. And that's something we don't want to do. We need to give it over to God because sometimes, yes, God can be overwhelming. Think about it. God Everything we read about him in the Bible, it's so hard for us to understand. You're taking a big God and trying to comprehend it. it uh, I heard someone say, this is like trying to explain the internet to an ant. Yeah, a little ant walks on the ground. You know, a little insect. That's how overwhelming it can be at times. But those are the times that we need to lean upon the Holy Spirit and allow him to guide us and direct us and allow him to settle us down and allow him to try to get open up our minds and our hearts so that we have some of God's light shine in and some of God's wisdom come in and then we start getting it. It's not something that we can just press a button or we can download an app or we can... Uh, uh, take a course and get certified in and then we're good for the rest of our life. This is a learning, growing, lifetime, lifestyle experience that we need to walk in every day. And we're not going to be complete with our maturity and our growing even up to our dying day. We'll never completely understand everything there is to know about God. That's why life is a journey and a walk with God so that we take little steps each day to draw closer to him and to understand him better and try to be more like him and live a better life. This is what Paul's trying to convey to us, okay? Uh, and the Father knows uh, all hearts will no, wait and the father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying for the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them that's a, one of the most famous verses in the book of Romans uh, there's a lot of famous verses in the book of Romans but there's another one okay we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him love God and are co called according to his purpose for them God's gonna work it out you have to trust him but at the same time you have to answer the calling he has on your life so he can work with you if you are ignoring the calling that god has on your life he's not going to be able to provide you the answers and he's not going to be able to work things out for you he's going to have to get you in tune with him first so that he can work those things out and he can do that stuff simultaneously but see sometimes we are the biggest hurdle we are our biggest hurdle we get in the way of god and don't allow him to help us so if we are 
of living up to the purposes for what God has called us to be, then he's going to work things out for our good. This is what Paul's telling us here. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn with many brothers and sisters. So here he's saying God wants us to be like Jesus, more and more like him each and every day, okay? so that Jesus can be the firstborn with many brothers and sisters in Christ, okay? And having chosen them, he called them to come to him, and gave, he gave them right standing with himself and promised them his glory. So see, God made a way for us to reconnect with him through Christ, who has helped us to find salvation and overcome sin and death through what he did on the cross, and... This enables us now to draw closer to God and be expectant of the future glory that God has promised to us. Do you see how all this stuff works together? There's a lot going on here, but this is really important. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Are you answering that calling? If you are, or if you're not, start seeking that calling out. Ask God, what is the calling that you have on my life? And that way you can be assured that whatever you're dealing with, God's going to work it out for your good, okay? Then if we become more and more like Christ, we become a brother and sister of Christ and a brother and sister in Christ with one another. And this brings us together in unity under Christ's lordship. And that's the goal. That is the purpose of the church, to bring everybody into unity under the wisdom that God has provided us through his holy word and to be saved individuals who are no longer under the threat of the penalty of sin and death that Jesus paid for us in full so that we can have a future and experience the future glory of God. So until next time, remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.